Hey, Mr. Kent here again. Wow, it's hard to believe we're on our third night. Our story tonight tells us about Jesus leaving us with the Holy Spirit. This was God's plan to allow God's love to be in us. We will make boats powered by the wind. The wind is like the Holy Spirit, because we cannot see it and is powerful. So take your items out of your, uh, out of your, your bag here. You have your mask, okay? What you want to do is put the sail into the mast, like this. So the word, the writing is facing out. And then we want to put this into the bottom, okay? What you want to do is prepare a little uh, a basin. You can do this in your sink or in the tub or whatever you have to water it, okay? You put your little boat in there. And what you do is use a fan or you can just blow or Sometimes if you have a couple of them, you can even race them. That's pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, happy sailing. You guys are great sailors. You can keep playing with your boats later, but I think that now we've blown our boats around, it's time to blow through some music. And praise God for the song. of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? They wondered, how can this be? 
These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Jen again here in our laboratory and tonight we're going to talk about how God's love is in us. I love that Bible story. It definitely reminds me that God's love is in us and that's our Bible point for tonight. Well, welcome back to our last night. We have some experiments to do. We're going to have some STEM fun tonight to help us remember that God's love is in us. I want you to get your handy dandy vacation Bible school activity bag. And in there, you're going to look around for the cups with the tape. And in there, you'll probably find some palms. And you're going to need a straw. All right. Now, some things you might want to have from around the house. You're going to want a cereal box and some scissors. So, because what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up and we're going to make obstacles. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. You also may want to have some toilet paper or paper towel tubes that you can cut short or cut apart. So, what we are going to do is we are going to make an obstacle course, okay? We're going to use this painter's tape. So, you're going to kind of peel it from around your cup. Look at this. Okay, that kind of worked. All right. Now, be careful with the tape because we're going to use it for a couple different things. You want to try and make sure it doesn't stick to itself. Now, you need to check with your grown-up, okay? Because what I found when I tried this at my house is that the painter's tape did take some of the finish off my very old and very well-worn dining table. So, it was so old. I didn't really care. But just wanted to give your grown-ups a heads up about that. So you're going to need a place where you can put your obstacle course. Um, like if you have a, a good countertop that, you, that the kiddos can reach or maybe a tile floor, that might be a good space to work out your obstacle course. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our tape and our cups. I took some cardboard and I made a ramp. And I'm going to use the ramp to launch my pom-pom off the ramp. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so you're going to start with a cup at one end of your obstacle course. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do? I'm going to set this tape here for just a second. All right, and then I want to, let's see, I think I'm going to do a tube, and I'm going to tear off 
a little piece of tape and I'm going to tape that down. I don't want it to move too much, but I don't want to use up too much tape. Let's see. And then I think after that, hmm, maybe I'll make it go up the ramp. So I'm going to tear off a little bit more tape to tape the sides of my ramp down. Go. And then let's see. Let's see. I think I might need some rails to help keep my pom pom on track. So I'm just gonna I cut a tube in half. Let's see. All right, we're getting this set up here. This is the fun. You can set your track up however you want. So be creative and have fun with it. If you have brothers and sisters, you guys can use your materials instead of like a super long track, or you can set up different ones and just be creative and try out your different tracks. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Then you also want to take whatever tape you have left over and, oopsies. Okay, so I figured I'm gonna have to, well, we'll try and do that without any tape. So this is the path I want my pom-pom to follow. I want it to go through the tube, up the ramp, and then over here. Ooh, I should make it go around the outside of this ramp. That might be kind of tricky. And then, back to the cup, and when I get to the cup, I'm going to try and go around it. I'm going to move it a little closer in so it's not close to the edge. I have a little extra tape, so if I want to change it later, I can. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I have my son Logan here today, and he is coming to the laboratory to help us out with this experiment. Logan, why don't you come on in here? He is going to time how long it takes me to use my straw to get the pom-pom to go through the obstacle. Now, in our Bible story today, do you remember that part where the disciples were all hiding in the room and a loud sound came and they said it sounded like a mighty rushing wind? Okay, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're not talking about wind so much as air, the air that we breathe in and out of our body. So we're gonna use our air to work this little pom-pom through the obstacle course. Logan's gonna use the timer on his phone to time me and see how long it takes. Actually, Logan, I might have you stand right over here. So that way, now I wanna start with my pom-pom in the cup. When we tried this at home, we found out that that was a fair way to make the start, because so, otherwise people kind of put their pom-pom too close or too far, it was just a good start spot. Okay, so Logan's gonna tell me, ready, set, go, and I'm gonna work my pom-pom through and we're gonna see how long it takes me, all right? Whenever you're ready. John. 21.12 seconds. 21.12, okay, so we are gonna go ahead and record that time, whoops, at my ramp. Okay, 21.12. All right, so that's my time. All right, guys, who can beat that time? Let's see what you got. Logan, you want to give it a try? Okay, get your straw. Hold on, let me reset your time. Ready, set, go. And then in the cup, and done. 31.79, almost. I think if it wouldn't have went off, we would have been really fast. Okay, can we get anybody else out there who wants to come out? Oh, Miss no, Beverly! Okay, hold on, let me record this time. 31.79 seconds. And I can't push it with the straw, right? No, it's no tattoo, that's cheater, cheater, no. pumpkin eater. Okay. Can't do that. All right. so okay. Put it in there.
science great and tonight we're using science technology engineering and mathematics we're using math when we're doing our time we're using science because we are learning about our bodies we were talking about our air tonight and we breathe in we breathe in oxygen in our lungs and when that happens the oxygen comes in our lungs and then all of a sudden our, it goes from our lungs to our blood. Our blood vessels carry it into all over our body so we have oxygen for our muscles and all kinds of chemical reactions to happen in our body. And all of this happens without us ever even thinking about it. Like, just think about this for a second. Like, your heart beats. Do you have to tell your heart to beat? Or it just does it automatically. You move your arm, you move your fingers. You know in your brain you want to do it, but there's all kinds of things that happen in your body to make that happen. And when I think about how God made our amazing bodies, it really helps me remember that God's love is in us. And God wants us to use that love that's in us to show his love to everyone around us. He wants us to do kind things for other people. He wants to be, say nice things, be helpful, be kind, and look for ways that we can help out and encourage other people. So I hope you and your family have fun with your obstacle courses. I can't wait to see your pictures of what you guys set up and see you having fun with your family doing these courses together. And so I hope that this experiment helps remember that God's love is in us. And right now, I'm feeling a little bit hungry, so you know it's time for a chat and a snack with Miss Beverly and Miss Michelle. I've had so much fun doing science this, all this time with you guys. It's been a blast. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Miss Jen. I think I'll be playing that game a lot. All right, girls and boys, I know Miss Beverly is going to say she's hungry. So go ahead and get out your snack. I'm ready to eat. Hey! Okay, you're right. Let's eat. Ooh, one of my favorites. So, Miss Beverly, what was your favorite part of the story tonight? Mm, well, I like that God kept his promise to send a helper, and that the wind was crazy wild, and that the Holy Spirit made the disciples talk in different languages so that everyone would understand, and that they shared everything. Whoa! <laughs> That was a lot of favorite parts. <laughs> the Holy Spirit really helps us know what to what we should say and do. I wish everybody would take care of each other the way the disciples do. Remember, they shared everything so that they all had what they needed. That's right. And I guess if God's love is in me because he sent the Holy Spirit, then I should do what the disciples did, right? I should tell other people about him and share with others um, so that we all have what we need. How can I do that? Well, you can tell people about God's love and you can show his love. Maybe you have a friend who needs help with their homework. You could call and offer to help them. Or maybe you could ask your mom and dad if they need help with the housework. Or maybe you have some old toys that you're too big for, and you could give them to your little brother or sister. Those are great ideas. Now that I know that God's love is in me, I need to share it. I think Miss Paula will be able to help me remember that. Hi, boys and girls. I love the way God's love is in us. Miss Paula here to help you finish your projects. So far, we have made a pillar and flame to remind us that God's love is for us. He was with Moses and he will lead us day and night. Last week we made a cross, it should look somewhat like this, to remind us that God's love is with us because he gave us Jesus. This week we will finish our mobile and then we can hang it up. We are going to make a cool peace sign to remind us of God's Holy Spirit. So you're going to pull your peace sign, it'll be in your bag, It'll look like this. One of the good things the Holy Spirit brings us to our lives is peace. That is why we're making a peace sign. 
we could all use more peace. Take your washable markers, which are also in your bag, like this. <laughs> Put them out there, and then you will also find a brush. So you will need that. And also, we're going to already have a little cup of water here. So the first thing you can do is put some color on your peace sign. And it doesn't matter, you just block it in like that, just like this. And you take your paintbrush, clean it. It's good to have also a paper towel, which I don't have here right now, but that will be helpful. And you take and you rub it with your plain water. And if you notice, and I'll show you this, what it does is it blurs your colors. And you can take and put multiple colors close to each other and even have them blur together. And it just looks so cool to have all these fun colors. It's almost like a tie-dye effect. All right, so you're gonna do that all the way around. And in the end, it's gonna look something like this. Those were the colors that I had at home. I'm gonna keep the hole to the top. And now we're going to go ahead and put our whole project together. We're gonna to start with our pillar and fire. And we're gonna use the very large string that you have in a special separate bag you're going to actually put it through the top two holes and tie a knot, again, if you need help, have your parents help you. Because it looks like even Miss Paula needs a little help with this one. <laughs> so, just like that. And then it goes across to the other side as well. push it underneath the jute string. I'm just going to attach it. So, small knot there. And if you need your parents or even a big brother or sister that can help you, it's a good time to ask. Just like that. Now, that's going to be attached to the bottom hole in your pillow. Just like that. Together. You're seeing that all three days of our VBS are going to be represented in our in our cool craft. So now we're going to add the last string to the whole peace sign. And this is going to make a nice mobile. It'll remind you what you learned this past VBS for the three days. Now, the hole in the bottom of the cross, you might need to get a pencil to help push that yarn through. It just makes it easier to get all the strands through. And then again, tie a knot. You can tie a single knot or just tie it around the whole bottom of the cross, whatever way you like to do it. But this must not be a long way. Look at that, when you have it all together, they all spin around, and you have made yourself your whole entire project. I hope you had as much fun as I did for these days of Family Fun Night. I will see you soon. This has been such a great night. Mr. Ken was so funny with those boats. I learned that God sent his Holy Spirit to help me every day. Miss Jen's pom-pom science time was a blast, even though I lost. The mobile that you helped me make, Miss Paula, will always remind me that God's love is for me, with me, and in me. And I'm glad Miss Michelle tells stories that help me understand, too. Miss Paula, 
Do you have a mission project that will help uh, me tell other people about God's love in us? Of course. Do you remember how the Holy Spirit came to the disciples like a mighty rushing wind? Check this out. There's one more project in your bag. Directions are in there with it, but we'll, we'll get you started. Okay, you're going to need your markers. Very important. You're going to get, this is um, not a straw. It's actually thicker than that. It's like a plastic piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you can open that up, Miss Bev, and kind of show us All right. how, how it's set up inside. Inside of this bag, you have this piece that is kind of four little pieces that pull apart. The blades, those are the blades of the pinwheel. Hmm, okay. Why are we making a pinwheel, I wonder? Hmm. Oh, well we talked about the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples like a mighty wind, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. How do you make a pinwheel turn? Oh, you blow on it. I get it. Okay, so when you blow on the pinwheel, it moves. And when God's Holy Spirit blows in us, we move in the direction God wants us to go. Well, that's really cool, isn't it? It is. It? It is. All right, so um, I actually made one of these earlier, but you take the blades and you're going to color both sides of it. You can use stripes or you can use polka dots or anything yeah. like that. Oh, and there's this little flower. I like your polka dot. Yeah. There's That's this really little cute. flower piece too, yeah. and we have to color that. Oh, okay. So also inside your bag is this little tiny piece and this thing that will hold that big straw. And all right, I had to look really carefully at the directions to make mine. There are directions in that bag that give you um, step by step what to do. So this little thing is what they call the colored plug and this is what they call the pinwheel mechanism. Now doesn't that sound fancy for that little tiny uh, piece of so plastic, important. right? Miss Beth, very important. And then you've got the straw. So when you fold it all together and put it together, ready? Ta-da! Oh. Here's my pinwheel. And FYI, I learned something while we were doing this, that it's really a good idea to color both sides. So yeah. you have it inside and an outside like Miss Bev. Yes. You turn it both ways. And then you put it together just like that. And you know what? My pinwheel doesn't really move very well, but I know what pinwheels are supposed to do. And I think I could put this in a little planter that I have on my patio, and it would still remind me about the Holy Spirit and the mighty rushing wind and how God is, um, God's love is in us. So it's or you can give it to a neighbor. Yeah, that would be fun. And if somebody asks me, hey, what's that? That's really cool. I can tell them why I made it and what I learned from it. So oh. I think that might be very cool because this reminds me that we move in God's way when the Holy Spirit fills us. It's good power to have. Yeah. All right. I hope you like your pinwheel. Send us a picture. Bye.